Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, so much news and only 24 hours in a day. And I know your time is very valuable. So let's just jump right in. Buckle up, Buttercup. Here we go. The first article I want to share with you. More license plate readers led to arrests of over 100 suspects, Denver police. Now, the city's plan is to install over 100 license plate readers. This was announced in January as part of the initiative to crack down on auto theft. Since the installation, the Denver Police Department said there have already been success stories. Now, if you read through this, I'm just going to give you the clip notes here. In the past five months, the readers already sorted through millions of vehicles detected by the system and helped law enforcement arrest at least 142 suspects, recover 11 weapons, and approximately 99 stolen vehicles. I'll just read it per the article. In the past month, the system captured 2 million vehicles while identifying 86,800 vehicles and license plates on the hot list, which flags wanted criminals and recovers stolen vehicles. So is this news article saying that 86,800 vehicles are on a hot list, which is flagged out of only 2 million vehicles? That's a lot of cars. That's a lot of vehicles. And then when you look at the amount of suspects arrested, you go from 2 million cars or 2 million vehicles to 86,800 vehicles being put on a hot list, which flags wanted criminals and recovers stolen vehicles, according to the article. 142 people are arrested. But what else constitutes for this hot list is, is very interesting. So We'll keep you posted on that. That's the first article. And real quick, I want to give a huge shout out to our friends over at c60evo.com slash leak project. There's a special discount code for leak project listeners. EVLP gives you an additional 10% off. There's already some incredible discounts and specials right now. Check out their website. Not only is this one of the most powerful antioxidants on the planet, it's also incredible for energy. I know people that have quit drinking energy drinks and coffee. I know people that put it in their coffee. I know people that put it in their smoothies, myself included. It's great on your salad. It's great for your pets. I actually did an awesome bike ride today. This is my bike ride from yesterday. I took a shot before I took off, but you can see my average time is about 17 and a half miles an hour. Uh, my distance was 33.6 miles, 834 feet of elevation gain. My max speed was 40.8 miles per hour. And this isn't an e-bike, this is a pedal bike. It's actually a felt road bike, weighs about 15 pounds. But this stuff is awesome, folks. And get the discount, let me know what you think, take the 30 day challenge, and let's get back to the podcast right now. Airforce.mil, new B-21 Raider program updates. I'll just, I'll just read it to you. The Department of Air Force leaders and industry partners provide updates on the B-21 Raider, the Air Force's newest bomber during a panel at the Air and Space Force Association's Air, Space, and Cyber Conference, September the 18th. One of the things that I thought was interesting in the article is it goes on to say, Boussier addressed current strategic threats posed by adversaries and the necessity of the bomber force. The future capabilities the B-21 will provide to keep pace with those threats. We are the free world's only bomber force. We're probably not going to see a decreased demand signal from our regional combatant commandos on bomber task forces, Boussier added. The demand signal, in my opinion, is only going to go up in the years ahead. As we transition from legacy to new, the B-21 fleet will provide great comfort to our allies and should provide great pause to any potential adversary. He added, nobody on the planet can do what we're doing right now. Nobody on the planet can build an exquisite, technologically advanced platform like the B-21. And quite frankly, nobody on the planet can hold at risk what we can hold at risk at a time and place of our choosing. Bailey echoed Boussier's comments about the adaptability of the B-21 systems, which were designed with flexibility in mind. I mean, this is about as close as you get to uh, an alien spacecraft with technology. I mean, this is absolutely far out in advance. It looks like you know, 50 years ago, we would have been calling these things alien spacecraft. But really, it's military's latest and greatest. So keep you updated on that. The next article I want to share with you is from Interesting Engineering. Energy extracted from space, teleported to new location using a quantum computer. 
yeah, about time to do something cool with a quantum computer. We hear about qubits and all this incredible technology that's supposed to be released to the world with quantum computers. But still, most of us, including myself, know very little about the technology. I would be honored to have a quantum physicist or somebody that actually has a degree in quantum computers, maybe builds them or writes code. That'd be pretty awesome. But let's read this. This is far out. The researchers used quantum computer to simulate how energy could be teleported and stored in a qubit. Remember when Gordy Rose said in a conference that, that's on YouTube, you can find this, where they were working on technologies that would be similar to summoning demons. And then he said, oh, we're hiring, by the way. Oh, yeah. It is easy to list the advantages of quantum computing these days. Still, none of those lists involve using it to harvest energy, teleport it elsewhere, and store it for future use. That's exactly what researchers at Purdue University in the U.S. have achieved in the past year, even though the idea was proposed over a decade ago. Quantum physics is still an emerging field, and much remains unknown about what can be accomplished. Scientists in the field keep proposing new theories that are tested extensively before they become laws and govern our understanding of the field. One such law states that a perfectly perfect space does not exist in the quantum realm. Even if the space were cleaned up to the tiniest of atoms, tiny flickers of quantum fields would still remain in it and even have quantum properties such as entanglement. So for teleporting energy, quantum entanglement is a fascinating phenomenon in quantum physics that explains the behavior of a group of particles whose quantum state cannot be described independently of the others. The entanglement continues even when a large distance separates the particles. Back in 2008, Masaryo Hata, a researcher at Tohoku University in Japan, proposed that the tiny flickers of quantum fields in empty spaces, when entangled, could be used to teleport energy. The idea remained a thought experiment for over a decade until quantum computing research picked up its pace. Then, when researchers attempted Hata's experiments, they were able to teleport energy. Then it hit a new hurdle. The teleported energy leaked into the environment. It was lost, and they couldn't store it. Here comes a research team led by Sabre Kais who is a chemistry, electrical, and computer engineer professor at Purdue University. He says the solution using quantum computing is now. His team solved the energy storage problem using the most basic quantum computing component, which are quantum bits or qubits. In the experiment, researchers use qubits in their lowest energy state. In a simpler world, this would be qubits at zero energy. But even with the emptiest places, we know that some of the energy due to tiny flickers of quantum fields is not perfect. If the two qubits were entangled and then separated, even the slightest of actions change their energy state. As an example, measurements of the first qubit's energy state were made. It would increase its energy slightly, which would be reflected in the entangled qubit as well. This change would not be visible at the other end. According to Kai's research, the extra energy could be stored in another qubit for future use. The researchers have tested this approach using simulations on a quantum computer. So, still a simulation, but in this simulation, energy can be extracted from space and teleported to a new location. Interesting engineering. Here's an unsettling article. Three Mile Island nuclear plant to restart power Microsoft data centers, Axios.com. Microsoft and Constellation Energy just unveiled a power purchase deal that would enable a restart of a reactor at Pennsylvania's Three Mile Island. Hmm, wonderful. What could possibly go wrong, folks? Why it matters, the plan to bring a plant associated with the infamous 1979 partial meltdown back online in 2028 blends two big energy trends. One is enormous, exuberant levels, voracious energy needs to power data centers, especially as artificial intelligence grows. 
and the other is proposals to restart mothball reactors or delay closures to meet rising electricity demand with zero carbon sources. Now, driving the news, the companies on Friday announced a 20-year supply deal from power from TMI's dormant 835 megawatt unit one, which closed in 2019. It sits adjacent to the reactor damaged in the infamous 1979 accident that set back the nuclear industry for decades. Now, the deal is a major milestone in Microsoft's efforts to help decarbonize the grid in support of our commitment to become carbon negative, VP of Energy Bobby Hollis said in a statement. Oh, well, that's wonderful because nuclear reactors are so much safer. What a hell of a way to boil water. Now, the state of play constellation plan to invest $1.6 billion to revive the reactor. And the restart will require Nuclear Regulatory Commission approval, state and local permits. Constellation sees nuclear energy tax credits in the 2022 climate law as crucial for the project, per the Washington Post. Hmm, wonderful. Here's another interesting article. Once again, what could possibly go wrong? ACU gets permit to build nation's first molten salt university research reactor. This is Nuclear Newswire, ANS.org. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission issued a construction permit yesterday to Abilene Christian University, giving ACU and its partners the go-ahead to build the molten salt research reactor, which is an MSRR facility on its Abilene, Texas campus. The one megawatt research reactor is the first molten salt fueled reactor to get a construction permit from the NRC. After Kairos powers Hermes, it is the second non-light water reactor construction permit issued by the NRC. And the non-power research reactor will use high assay, low enriched uranium. The non-power research reactor will use high assay, low enriched uranium fuel dissolved in molten FLIBE salt, which is a mix of lithium fluoride and beryllium fluoride. Beryllium fluoride. The NRC speaks, this is the first research reactor project we've approved for construction in decades. And the staff successfully worked with the ACU to resolve several technical issues with this novel design, said Andrea Bell, director of the NRC's Office of Nuclear Reactor Regulation. Going forward, we'll have inspectors on the ACU campus when construction gets started. Toga party! Yeah! Oh, wait, you don't have toga parties at ACU? That's a Christian university. I saw this coming. Next article, Science Daily. Scientists say we have enough evidence to agree global action on microplastics. An international group of researchers says two decades of research have generated sufficient knowledge about the sources and effects of microplastics to allow world leaders to agree measures to address them. The argument comes 20 years after the first ever study to coin the term microplastics to describe the microscopic fragments of plastics in our ocean. Yeah, and everywhere else they've been testing it, it seems like. The news articles that are coming out about where they're finding microplastics in the human body and the environment, it's bad. And I thought to myself years ago, why not replace plastic with something like hemp? Hello. I mean, clearly there's I mean, we don't even need to, I think you already know. But will they finally start to use hemp and other natural measures to offset the pollution with plastic? Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope so. Science has provided more than sufficient evidence to inform a collective and global approach to tackle the continued spread of plastic pollution, according to a new report. Writing in the journal Science, an international group of experts say they need worldwide action to tackle all forms of plastic and microplastic debris because it has never been more pressing. This is an interesting article. This is Watcher.Guru. 159 countries set to adopt BRICS new payment system. Gold has given you a chance, a once in a generation buying opportunity on its way to 4,400. This is outside the box market watch. Gold is having a moment, but silver is poised for its own. Morning Brief, Yahoo Finance. 
BRICS news and the end of the United Nations. Interesting articles right now speculating the possibility of the United Nations essentially disbanding because of the amount of nations that want to leave the UN potentially. Uh, you can read all about it, or you can watch it at Fast Epo on YouTube. Also, you can go to Council on Foreign Relations, the BRICS Summit 2023, seeking an alternative world order, question mark. Reuters, BRICS welcomes new members and push to reshuffle world order. Wow. Lots of news today. Oh, yeah. This is pretty cool. The biggest black hole jets ever seen are so long, as long as up to 140 Milky Ways. The largest ever black hole jets ever seen hint that these cosmic monsters may play an even bigger role, more significant in shaping galaxies than previously thought. Astronomers have spotted the biggest pair of black hole jets ever seen at 23 million light years in length. They're as long as 140 Milky Way galaxies laid end to end. The enormous jet pair, nicknamed Porphyrian, after a giant in Greek mythology, are gigantic beams of ionized matter that are erupted from a black hole at close to light speed. Their origin is a massive black hole 7.5 billion light years away from Earth, which they burst from with the power of trillions of stars. The jets were discovered among 10,000 others in a survey by Europe's Low Frequency Array radio telescope. By studying the tendrils of these colossal outflows, scientists hope to understand how they shaped the early cosmos into the form we see today. The researchers published their findings September 17th in the journal Nature. Now, first of all, I always, you know, was taught that black holes, nothing can exit a black hole, nothing can leave a black hole. And now they've completely changed the, the mindset of black holes in the news anyway, describing how these jets, I mean, can you imagine the scope of a plasma jet shooting out of a black hole 140 times as long as the Milky Way end to end? Makes me think of the ancient cataclysms that are written about in mythologies and the thunderbolts of the gods and these events that took place in the past that reshaped the universe, that reshaped the solar system and the planets. And something of that size, I would think, could potentially wipe out entire solar systems. If you had an advanced civilization that expanded multiple solar systems with something that would launch a plasma jet 140 times the length of the Milky Way, dozens of millions of light years across. That's, wow, pretty incredible. So thank you for watching. Hit the bell. Be well. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you on Patreon. Be the change you want to see.